Hello and welcome to Local Matters. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm April Brown. Golden Retrievers are one of the most popular breeds of dogs and that means there are a lot of them out there. For a variety of reasons though, sometimes they may need a new home. And Rescue a Golden of Arizona <laughs> is an organization dedicated to taking care of homeless Goldens and finding them a very new, nice new place to live. <laughs> so joining us today from Rescue a Golden Arizona is Susan Finkenberg. She's the Southern Director of the organization and that means her area takes in pretty much everything east of Yuma and south of Phoenix. So thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Also joining us today is Joyce Sanford. She is Rescue of Golden's second vice president. A lot of work there. We'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> yeah. I should mention that Joyce and Susan have each brought their Goldens, so this might be a very um, lively show at some point. <laughs> Roxy is three years old right here. Belongs to Susan. Very, very calm. Good dog so far. I'm sure she's a good dog all the time. <laughs> and Ben is two years old, or Roxy's five years old. Mm -hmm. Is two years old and lives with Joyce and uh, has already decided that we're not very interesting and has gone off to take a nap. So that's yeah, all right. Quite <laughs> sleepy. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm glad you're all here. Thank you so much. Let's mm. start with you, Susan. What is so special about this breed of dog? What's so special about Golden Retrievers is that they love everybody. They want to be with you. They want to share their whole life with you and they don't care who you are or what you're doing. Uh, it's total acceptance. You've had this for quite a while. Yes. You were mentioning that this is not your first. No. What, what brought you to this breed in the first place? Well, I had a husband who never had a dog. And we bought our house in New Jersey from people who had a golden retriever. And at that point, I decided I was going to have a golden. <laughs> Years went past. I told him it's a divorce or a dog. We babysat for a friend's golden, and he fell in love. Did you have a similar experience, Joyce, or? <laughs> well, not quite that Perhaps not. <laughs> I've had a, a variety of breeds of dogs over the years, and my most recent one happened to be a Las Opso, which they tend to have a little bit of an attitude. And I said, you know, I really would like to get a dog that wanted to do what I wanted it to do. And Goldens fall into that category, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They live to please us. And so I got the first one, and my husband said, why on earth are we getting such a large, hairy dog? <laughs> <laughs> and within about, oh, 10 minutes, that large, hairy puppy <laughs> came wrapped around his finger. They, the, the, <laughs> it seems that they have that effect on a lot of people, and, and not only people in this room as well. <laughs> what are some of the characteristics that make this dog a good pet? Besides, you know, you're mentioning that they just love people. Are they good activity dogs, good watchdogs as well? Well, they're not really watchdogs. Uh, they may watch, <laughs> but they don't do much. But they love to do things with you. They're good hikers. They're good swimmers. Um, they get involved in activities. My older one is doing can freestyle. Uh, they get involved in agility. They do tricks. They learn tricks. They're therapy dogs. So that means that you and your dog can go to a hospital or a nursing home or a school and share your dog and your love of dogs with other people. Well, in fact, we've got a therapy or soon-to-be therapy dog among us. Uh, yes, Ben is a therapy dog. dog. And Roxy is soon-to-be a therapy okay, dog. Okay, that's where I got confused. <laughs> they have a special little vest that they yes. wear when they go and um, um, visit. Ben wears this little vest when he goes to visit. It says therapy dog on it so that he's identified and that he can go into places. And he also has his Canine Good Citizen badge on here, which he had passed. And he is certified through the Southern Arizona Humane Society here in Tucson in what they call their VIP program. And it's they, first they behavior test the dog, then there's a series mm -hmm. of classes, and then a final test, which is done over at TMC. And they have to actually work with um, someone in a wheelchair, this type of thing, and undergo being hugged, being surprised, things like that, so that there are no surprises when you take them into a hospital. He can also go to a library and be read, be part of the reading program, which is a popular thing here in town. So their disposition so. just makes them quite good for that type of yeah, type of job. Mm -hmm. He's only two, and as you saw earlier, he can be quite uh, bouncy. But he knows <laughs> yes. when he has to behave, and he tries very hard to behave at, at the right time. They really live to please us. And they're smart dogs. Very. They're very smart. I mean, that's why they use them as guide dogs for the blind, because if you're going to put your life in a dog's hand, you want a dog who can think and make decisions and make the right decisions. 
All right, so we've gotten to all the good characteristics. Unfortunately, though, some people aren't able to care for their goldens. How do the goldens come to you for, for rescue and for, for a new home? A variety of reasons. One of our major things that happens is people do get a golden. They haven't researched the breed. They are large dogs. They shed a lot. They do. That's evidenced by <laughs> yes. well, part of this is my own dog, but yeah, so there is some shedding yes. involved. <laughs> they also, as puppies particularly, are very, very active. These are dogs that were bred to hunt. They are supposed to go out in the field and run for miles, and people forget that. They do need a lot of exercise, and a lot of times people get them, and that doesn't happen. And then the dog variety of reasons starts getting into trouble. He's ch digging up the irrigation because it's so much fun when it plays with him. Uh, he's uh, running through the house and knocking down small children, that type of thing. And it's just typical golden retriever behavior, but it makes them unsuitable for some families. Now, you also mentioned before, uh, most recently you're having some other reasons why people are giving up their goldens. Uh, I guess it's not really surprising that when people lose their homes, Sometimes they still lose their pets as well. Yeah, well, we're seeing goldens come in because of foreclosures. We're seeing goldens come in because people have to move to a small place or move in with their parents. And in addition, we're seeing goldens come in because their owners are employed. And um, there's nobody home to take care of the dog. So some of these are the ways that you get your dogs. What are mm -hmm. some of the others? Okay, some mm -hmm. of the other ways are People have illnesses and can take care of their dogs, or they're getting old, or they go into an assisted living facility, or they die, or they get divorced, and all of a sudden, nobody wants the responsibility by themselves. Because this is, Goldens are two-year-olds for the rest of their life. And if you think about them as if they were a two-year-old child, then you know what you have to do to make your home safe for them. Sure. And if you're not willing to do that, then it's not an appropriate placement. So, with all of these circumstances, a lot of dogs each year, how many dogs do you end up placing? How many Goldens do you have to find new homes for? We just got our 187th one for this year. Last year, we were at 332, I believe, for the year. And it has been creeping up every year. The first couple years that we were in existence, it was a lesser number, but as times are changing. And with the economy, we expect to see more dogs coming in, unfortunately. So there are a lot of things that you end up doing. There's fostering, there's finding homes. Give me an idea of the types of responsibilities that you have for all of these dogs that you, that you take in. <laughs> oh, good grief. Where do we start? <laughs> um, well, we take in a dog. The first thing that happens when a dog is taken in is that it needs a place to go. First. And our fosters are a very big part of that we try whenever possible to put the dog into a home immediately rather than put it into boarding. However, 